Welcome everyone to our ENA Together virtual town hall. On behalf of ENA Board of Directors, I'd like to say thank you for taking time out of your day. Uh, hang out with uh, us and some of your peers to catch up on ENA happenings and connect with fellow members uh, as well. Although there are plenty of signs that COVID-19 pandemic is relinqu uh, relinquishing its hold on us personally and professionally, uh, we know it's not entirely over yet. Um, and yes, we might be seeing fewer COVID patients in our EDs and returning to normalcy in many ways, but that doesn't mean the toll of the stress and the anxiety we've all experienced is going to disappear anytime soon. That's the reason we've continued to the ENA Together virtual town halls. Initially started as a way to keep members connected with ENA and each other on a COVID related matters. Uh, last year with Mike, this quarterly event has revolved into a broader opportunity for us to just kind of do a pulse check with everybody. Uh, all we need from a time to time, a few minutes, I realize as others are going through the same things as us and we can chat about it and find solutions together. The ENA community has always become stronger in the last 18 months and because you continue to look out for one another, just as ENA has done for the uh, done its best to be there for all of you, the next hour is about togetherness and support. So I encourage you to engage to get most out of to get the most out of the town hall. Feel free to use the chat. Uh, we'll come off mute here in a little bit if you have some ideas, uh, but it's always good to kind of go back and forth and kind of catch up with everybody. You know, we're seeing names go through the chat, but man, I can't wait to see faces in Orlando here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so jump in the chat. Like I said, please submit your questions using the Q&A tab, which is different than the chat, and we'll get to as many of those as we can. I also encourage you to share your stories, experiences, ask questions, et cetera, to your support in 2021. So let's hear as many of you can today. So just throwing those ideas up there in the chat would be great. Uh, for today's moment of reflection, I wanna share this quote, nurturing yourself is not selfish. It's essential to your survival and your well-being." I like quotes and, and use them as a tone setter to start meetings that I lead, including some of the board of directors when we all meet as a, when we have our board of directors meetings. Uh, this one jumped out because how it fits so much of what we've heard and seen over the last year. We're tired, we're hurting, and we're struggling. And as the emphasis continues to grow on ways to help the frontline healthcare workers, people like us in the ED in particular understand the struggles we have with self-care. We're tough. We're caregivers who need to worry about who uh, we who need to worry about others first. We don't have time. Um, for many, those are the go-to reasons for not letting us uh, being stressed, burned out, or worse. Funny thing is, those excuses are also the exact reasons we all need to take care of ourselves first. As the world slowly reopens, let us all think about how we can push to make our self-care a priority. Uh, drop some of your thoughts in the chat to share some of the ideas that you do for self-care, and I know that you know, we typically as nurses and ED nurses specifically put up a wall um, of feelings. We don't want, you know, we don't want to get the feels. Uh, but, you know, harboring all that in is not healthy and it's not going to it's not going to be good. So, you know, uh, for me, I took a recent vacation with some good friends to celebrate a milestone birthday. We won't tell you what birthday that was, but uh, with a great opportunity to kind of reset. Um, I've also focused on the little thing, the day to day that keep me going. Uh, for me, I prioritize being involved in my kids' activities, whether that's driving to lacrosse or soccer practices, uh, going to the scout meetings with my son, and just having conversations with the other youth at the meetings, and exercising as much as I can, and, and then really looking at the little things that I realize that I've missed. Uh, at Sunday at Mass, it was just, it was really crazy because I didn't realize how much I missed the singing. Uh, you know, we would uh, no singing in church until now. Um, and then hearing the priest uh, chant the mass uh, as opposed to just saying it because that was forbidden before. And then the other thing I really, really enjoy is just seeing smiles in public. Uh, here I, I'm in Indiana, as many of you know, and some of our, you know, some of the uh, restrictions have been lifted a little bit. And, you know, going into the grocery store and actually seeing people faces uh, below the nose is is awesome to see. Um, as I mentioned, I like quotes, and I also get a daily quote sent to me in an email. And I read it in the morning, and I take just a moment to reflect on it. 
And sometimes I share with others and I find that very valuable, especially if it resonates with me and the relationship I have with that other person. I'll just forward that on. So we got some other things here. Reading. Oh, transformed by uh, transformed by trauma. Um, playing with a granddaughter. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Uh, morning walks, natural re uh, recreational park, seeing the deer. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Teresa. It's great to see faces and smiles. Um, so in a few minutes, um, we'll talk more about the state of our mental health and well-being, just a pulse check of how we're all holding up. So right now, let me share some ENA headline, headlines for everybody. There, as you can guess, there's a ton happening around ENA. So I'm excited to share a few updates and other news as we want to get uh, share with all you guys. And you can uh, scream it from the mountaintops to all the peers and friends as well. We are almost exactly three months away from opening of EN21, a hybrid experience. Early bird registration runs through the end of July, so July 31st, to be with us in Orlando, Florida, or to join us for the biggest event of the year from a virtually everywhere a virtual attendee can do. The education lineup is available, so you can begin to pick out the sessions you won't want to miss. Watch your email this week for more information on everything that will be offered this year. And don't forget, all attendees receive on-demand access conference content through January, which is such a great value. And you consider much of what EN, EN21 is offering. I've seen some of the, the courses and, and, you know, been meeting with the staff and the members who are helping put this all together. And I can't wait. It's, it's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, I, I told them originally, I, I know, I think I've said this before to a lot of people, but I told him originally we almost build a we need to build a day and a half in there just to catch up and tell stories and see everybody and everything. So um, and then also to learn more, you can enter. Oh, hold, hold on. Got the next one. ENA is also giving members a chance to be part of EN21 for free. When you renew your membership, renew by July 31st to save 15 percent, but also be entered into a drawing to win one of six virtual conference registrations and one of four virtual student registrations, a full conference student registration, or the big one, a full conference registration. If you're a lifetime member, you can also enter for a shot at a free registration. To learn more, visit ena.org slash membership slash en20x free. Uh, maybe somebody can drop that in the, the chat box too here in a little bit. Um, speaking of Orlando, don't forget, General Assembly will be held fully in person on the first with a first half day session on September 21st and then a full day session on September 22nd. So remember, General Assembly will be all in person, half day on the 21st and a full day on the 22nd. Uh, registration is now open for state presidents to enter their state council delegates. Each state council must register their delegates alternate delegate and state captain in the ENA online management system no later than July 7th. So if you're not a leader or if you're, you don't see your leaders on here, make sure everybody gets that information no later than July 7th. For other General Assembly resources, go ahead and visit ena.org backslash general hash or yeah, hash assembly or reach out to governance at ena.org. This next cool thing is awesome. Maybe some of you saw the uh, news about it yesterday, but we wrapped up the Ian, Ian Strong Challenge at the end of May with a record setting total of money raised in the ENA Foundation. It, it, like I said, we went out yesterday in a big media, but the challenge blew away previous years by collecting, hang on, an amazing $413,000. Four hundred and thirteen thousand uh, will go to support emergency nurses. Now let's put it in perspective. Between 2012 and 2020, the state challenge averaged around 140,000 each year. We blew it away by almost four times. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this total was reached uh, thanks to 89, 893 donations from 450 individual donors, including 100 and in public, 100 public contributors. And then I like to recognize a few states, Kentucky, California, Virginia, and Texas, which raised a whopping $151,000. All 
awesome. I see Sally Snow put in there. Uh, you guys rocked it, and and you're right, Sally. We, they everybody did. Uh, so yeah, I on speaking on behalf of Sally there. So thank you everyone who donated. Uh, I think one of the new platform and the new challenge was it was great. You know, for me personally, it was reaching out to some people I probably normally wanted to reach out to because uh, I didn't want to lose to my challenge against my colleague Sally Snow. So. It was great to engage other people outside of the nursing profession. And, and I think, you know, as we continue to do that, I, I, I foresee that 413,000 being um, another record being set above that too as well. So, all right, switching gears a little. Um, Gene level two is coming soon to ENA's portfolio of high quality emergency nursing education. This new course explores why high risk geriatric patients present with vague and atypical symptoms. Gene 2 features modules on falls, confusion, abdominal pain, and fatigue, and introduces more advanced ways to apply critical thinking to this patient population through scenarios and incorporates the four Ms, mobility, mentation, medication, and what matters. Of all the age-friendly health uh, approach to improve patient communications and care. And it's all designed for you having an engaging and interacting online experience. So stay tuned for more information for info geez, let me try that again. So stay tuned for more information about the debut of Gene 2. You might remember me talking about in the March virtual town hall about the next big thing ENA has in store to change emergency nursing education. I mean, we're gonna set a huge standard here, and that's ENA University. I'll be honest, I want to talk you years off about this dynamic new initiative, but we'll be launching in the coming months. But, but uh, here today, I've promised not to spoil all ENA's university debut by giving away too much too soon. So hang tight. Here's what I can tell you. ENA University will be our new center for excellence for emergency nursing education that supports your skill and career development, no matter your experience level portfolio. Well, we're talking a one-stop shop, ha has everything ENA's robust portfolio has to offer, including our gold standard ENPC and TNCC courses, to the new career-centered pathways, mentoring and peer engagement, and even more learning opportunities through ENA's industry partners. A lot of time and hard work has gone in to build out the ENA University, and we can't wait to share with you the more in the near future. More information is just around the corner. So watch your inbox and ENA social media for more details. That was definitely a lot of news in a short amount of time. So let's check to see if there's any questions or comments from the audience. Dan, you have any? So what we've got, uh, we have one question relating to ENA University and also the learning management systems changes uh, that are upcoming, um, particularly relating to TNCC and ENPC. Uh, Ron, I know you have a little bit of information about how we've been communicating on that and, and what's to come. Yeah, I've been a lot of communication going out on the LMS. And so just a reminder here, you'll be more coming at you. But any uh, it's been going through the course directors and course instructors. So just a reminder, uh, July 23rd will be the last time if you're currently taking some kind of online educational program or whatever, and you're in the midst of it, you have until July 23rd to finish that up. If you don't finish it up by July 23rd, you have to start all over. So let everybody know. So this is kind of what's happening. Um, it's taking this, it's gonna be awesome when it's all done, but it's it's kind of not, as Nancy alluded to it, it's not really that sexy to talk about. It's like when you are when you have to buy a new uh, water heater or a new uh, furnace at your house and nobody really gets to see the results of it, but you know that you feel the comfort and the, and the, wa and the hot water. It's kind of the same thing that's going on. This is all behind the scenes of making everything so our learning management system and everything kind of goes smoothly and even even better than what it is right now so again so you have until july 23rd to complete anything that you're working on online and then there will be a total blackout from 729 to august 2nd so that's the whole time to kind of that's the time that uh we got to cut off the the water heater and put the new water heater in and the new furnace so uh, so there'll be some downtime there. What was the other one, Dan? So uh, there's a, there was a question about GA and we wanna make sure that we're, we're clear on it. Um, okay. Relating to whether there is virtual participation this year, 
compared to whether it would be live streamed, which it will be available for people to view, uh, you know, from from outside of, of Orlando, but there will not be virtual participation as there was in EN20X. Correct. So you'll be able to view it and see what's going on, but there will be now a not availability to interact per se, like there was last year. Um, and that was that was it in terms of questions from the from the headlines. Um, you know, obviously, there's you know, in the chat. You can see that people are uh, you know, excited about the foundation's fundraising, and um, certainly are interested in getting you know checking out the links for uh, the EN21 uh, free registration opportunities through renewals. Uh, but uh, that's where we're at for right now. Yeah. So you know, with that uh, with that competition with the renewal and a chance to to log in there, that's that's I would encourage you and uh, challenge everybody to get the people that you know you work side by side with uh, that aren't members, get them to sign up, um, or if they're members, to you know, extend that that uh, membership a little bit longer out 12 months and just get them an opportunity, even if they win the virtual one, uh, so they can kind of get a taste of the education and stuff that ENA has to offer. So, all right, I want to circle back around now to the key question of the day. How are you feeling? So we started the day with some reflections intended to get us thinking about that question a little more. Now that we, uh, not that we need reminders of the wear and tear we've been experiencing right now, but I will tell you that these headlines kind of paint quite a big picture. And you just take a moment to look at them and read them. Behind these headlines are countless emergency department nurses and other healthcare workers, each working through the pandemic's emotional impact on their own ways. Uh, so let me pose a couple of questions to kind of get a pulse check among the group here today. And, and I, I would even add to these. I don't know what everybody else is kind of seeing, but in, in my in my emergency department right now, we're seeing uh, our volumes are going up. Uh, the the violence has not went away. It, if anything, it might have gotten worse. Uh, so they the, have those stressors. Uh, you know, my inpatient colleagues are there's a nursing uh, void upstairs. So as we all know, that just backs it up into ours. So an increase in holds, an increase in frustration. You got society, societal things. You know, we've had mass shootings, and you know, and just when that, those things happen. Every time that happens, an emergency department nurse potentially is involved in that and has to go home with that. So, um, so a poll question for you: Which of these best describes the pandemic's greatest impact on your life? So, if you take a few seconds here, which of these best describes the pandemic's greatest impact on your life? And just give you a few more seconds here and and whoever i'll let the the oz figure out when we're going to close it down to the man behind the curtain or actually it's woman nan <laughs> So there's your results. We had 45. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, uh, responses there, Ron. So I should walk us yeah, through. Yeah. So yeah, you know, the 44 percent, 20 of you said I'm more focused on my family and, and work-life balance, um, paying more attention to any mental health and physical health. Um, good. Yeah. I, I think. I mean, yeah. Really. I mean, I think that's the same way. You know, maybe we should have been doing that all along, right? It kind of just reinforces though that you kind of focus on your family and your work-life balance, you know, I mean, I, I love my job. I love where I work, but you know, at the end of the day, when I retire, when I die, you know, life goes on. Right. But I don't, I will miss those times that maybe I didn't go to a, a practice with my kid or meet up with a friend for lunch or whatever it might be. So just making sure that we maintain that balance, I think is very, very important. Run based on some of those headlines, are you a little surprised to see, you know, percentage wise, I know we have a, a smaller group here, but um, that it, it's not impacting more career thoughts, because we've seen a lot of that out in, in uh, healthcare media, people who are leaving the profession or leaving their specialties uh, because of everything they've experienced last year. Does that surprise you at all? 
Yeah, a little bit, but you know, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, we haven't had that here, and my colleagues around me haven't really talked about wanting to leave the ED or nursing in general. I mean, so I, I don't know. I think that uh, you know, but that sounds that's good. I hope. I hope not. I hope we don't leave the ED. And actually, just yesterday, I had an opportunity to connect with. Uh, we had a, a past president's kind of like a Zoom connection, and there's about twenty of them on there, I think, and. We were talking about one of them was associated with a college of nursing and their enrollment is uh, skyrocketing in people wanting to come into nursing. So to me, that that bodes very, very well. So that's awesome. But I think, you know, the, the I'm paying more attention to my mental health and physical health is another good one. And it's uh, and I can't remember where I read this. I wish I had that exact exact spot, but it was kind of along the same lines that their healthcare system was going along with this concept of see something, say something like uh, right after 9-11. But it's, it's more of like looking at our colleagues, looking at our friends, looking at our family and checking in with them. You know, if, and, you know, if you see something that's just not right, say something uh, and, and help help each other out. So all right, we'll go to the next question. Compared to a year ago, how would you rate your overall well-being? Looks like we got our answers in. There you go, Ron. Okay. That's awesome. All right, so most of you are better. That's good to hear. Yeah, and I would, you know, the other one down there more complicated than those answers convey. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes it's day by day for me, right? I mean, sometimes I, some aspect of my life, I feel like I'm doing better, some not so much. So, yeah, um, that's good, you know, and, and as we as we continue on this journey out of this tunnel and into the light here a little bit, um, I don't know, I, I, you know, it's, it's one of those opportunities to just make sure, again, we're checking on each other taking care of ourselves, um, you know, going back to the self-care, a lot of times we don't really want to do that, but we like to fill everybody else's bucket, but you know how the old saying goes, you can't fill a bucket if, it's your, if yours is empty. So make sure we fill our buckets as well and do some really good self-care so, and watching out for each other. So Ron, as you noted, there's a couple of things in the chat. We also had a couple of, of comments that were shared earlier uh, when, when, uh, when people registered. Uh, sort of assessing things and, you know, people have noted some of the same things that were no mentioned in the headlines, uh, seeing burnout, um, but, you know, also people talking about, you know, higher numbers, as you pointed out, you know, vacancy rates, you know, the burnout, uh, patient volume, acuity, uh, overall census. But something that, you know, I want you to comment on here was the thought that um, one observation came in was, uh, from some uh, some peers was it's not the same it may never be and we're unable to take care pa care of patients uh, like we need to uh, what do you what have you seen specifically um, in your world when it comes to that because we we just had the, the poll which I think was great says that you know well being is better than it was a year ago but there's still some uh, residuals that people will be negotiating for a long time and I know that's kind of where we're, we're going with our next question but what, what have you seen in terms of, you know, what's different now compared to this time last year when we were just reaching the first summer of COVID? Right. Yeah, I think, I think we, I think we have to recognize that, yeah, some things are not going to be the same, right? Things are going to be different. We've all been impacted professionally, personally. Um, some of us has lost family members. Some of us have lost colleagues, um, you know, and, 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 and a sense of loss of a lot of a lot of different things and, and the way we interact with each other has changed a little bit. So I think, you know, one of the things that is really important is to acknowledge that, share those feelings with people. And, 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 and we have to just come to an acceptance at some point in time that some things just may not be the same again. So, you know, I, I it's not nearly the same, but, you know, if you think about we're coming up on 20 years of 9-11 and, and think about air travel or moving about around the world uh, before 9-11 and then to where it is now, you know, and those, those changes of, you know, explaining to my kids as we go through the airport security, I'm like, you know, first time I flew, there was no, there's none of the things you could walk right up to the gate and they're like, really? You know, it's just kind of one of those things that just kind of acknowledge it accept it and we have to uh, move on and realize that it, 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 it may be different and it, there's a lot of aspects that will be different for sure. 
There was also a comment earlier that was talking about um, having worked through the uh, the AIDS epidemic, and you know, the both the from the the clinical side, I, I'm sure we've we've all seen and read things about how that changed, you know, the clinical practice. But the idea that Rita shared was. Um, you know, rest and relaxation, renewing the body and mind and, uh, you know, taking that vacation time, even if you don't have anything to do. So the learning that comes from this um, and how things are different isn't just re re revolving around what you do to treat patients in your ED. It's also about, you know, what we've been talking about here, which is how do you come out of this stronger and taking better care of yourself moving forward? What, how are, how are you seeing that play out in, in where you work, Ron, with, you know, that focus being not just about what do we learn clinically, but how do we learn about ourselves and be better as a, as humans and, and, you know, in dealing with something as dramatic and stressful as like, as this has been. Yeah, I think, I think the, the key thing here is communicate uh, and be open, uh, be willing to share with each other uh, those feelings and those experiences that you have, because I think once you share that with somebody or even just talk about it, it gives them the space and the freedom to share their feelings and their thoughts as well. So as we look at that, I think that's, you know, kind of highlighting a little bit of that is, is very, very important. So. And, you know, touching on your point, um, you know, it was also mentioned, you know, all these other things that people have, have been through, uh, you know, HIV, you know, uh, 9-11 and you know, to your point, caring for one another is, you know, was what happened then. And it certainly seems like the, the key ingredient moving forward, which, actually takes you to your next question for the, for our attendees today, Ron. Yeah. So, um, and so, so where do we go from here? Right. Um, what can we do today to prepare for the long-term impact of the pandemic and nurse well-being? And I'd like to hear some of your thoughts. So where, where do we, where do we go from here? Um, you know, from my perspective, and I'll reiterate again, I, I think it's keep the conversation going. I think having these virtual town halls, you know, I don't, I don't, really foresee these kind of hopefully not going away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sharing the conversation, don't pass judgment, uh, be open and listen to everybody. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, be willing to share because once you share something with somebody, uh, others will follow your lead. And I'll use an example that happened not too long ago with one of our nurses. And uh, I, I, I went up to her to say hi to her or whatever. And you could tell that she was, she wasn't the same. She wasn't her normal self. And I, you see it in her eyes and, and she kind of just went, went away and I could tell she was under a little bit of stress. So I kind of gave her a little bit of space in a moment and I came back and then she's like, you know, I just, I just had a, I had a hor horrific code run, a horrific code. Um, and, and it was one of the first times that she'd had the experience of the family in there, but also the family really interacting with the staff in my, by being verbal. And, uh, you know, it was, it was the wife of the patient who said, I don't know what I'm going to do without him now. I can't, I, I, I've lived with him for years. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then she just kind of lost it. Uh, and then she, at that moment, she told me, she goes, well, I, I guess I'm human, Ron. And I'm, I, I go, yeah, you are, you know? And, but when we were starting to talk about that, there was like three other people around and we all started having that conversation about being human and it, and it's okay to be human. Um, it's okay to show your emotion. And she's like, well, that's just not me, you know, you know, and it's, you know, she was just kind of like, I'm typically a robot, you know, she's one of those ones that, you know, like typically likes to show, you know, I, I can, I can handle anything you throw it at me, but that got to her. And I said, that's okay. And that's kind of one of the, the things that we talk about with everybody else too. It's, it's okay. But having that conversation and her willing to be vulnerable and share that really helped uh, a, a lot of other people in the department. So. So Ron, there's some good comments in the chat I want to get to in a second, but um, for those that weren't a part of Day Off the Hill, and, and you were also a part of another event uh, shortly after Day Off the Hill, um, would really, really exemplify the idea that there are others who are, out, are interested in our, you know, I, I don't mean our, but in emergency nurses uh, and healthcare workers in general, in protecting them and helping them get through this. Talk a little bit about some of those experiences through Day Off the Hill and then uh, the the event with the Illinois congressman shortly thereafter. Yeah, I had the opportunity to visit and we did have like maybe the press release a little bit and uh, with uh, the, the congressman that represents where our headquarters is, is in Schaumburg, Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, Raja Kirsten-Amarthi. Um, and in, in that in that meeting was the local, we have a local hospital and just, you know, seeing 
the, the CNO, the CMO, the, the head of psychiatric uh, and, and, you know, and, and the rep and the congressman just knowing and really understanding about the whole concept that this, everybody's on, on board with this and feeling the need and sees the need. Um, I, I challenge us uh, as we talk to our neighbor when you're out hanging out or, you know, whatever your, your family members that may not be in healthcare. Um, not, not to, not that they're not hurting too, and everybody's suffered some loss, but I think there's a little bit, a little bit more that we are, we, we've suffered as healthcare workers. And I think that we need to make sure that people know that, um, because if they don't know it, then they don't know how to help. So. What about, uh, Senator Tim Kaine's comments as the, uh, as one of the sponsors of the Dr. Lorna Breen, uh, provider protection act, which is really geared, you know, directly toward issues that have been brought up here, stress, anxiety, burnout, um, that was a little bit different um, of an experience to see someone in his position, you know, be as emotional as he was. What, what did you take away from, he's just not sponsoring this bill. He's really, he really showed that he cared about our audience in particular that day. Yeah. So for the ones that were, didn't have the opportunity to be on Day Off the Hill, just to let you know, Senator Doug, Tim Kaine is the sponsor of a bill, the legislation, it's a Lord Breen, Dr. Lauren Breen, Healthcare Provider Protection Act, and what what it really is is it goes. On, you may, some of you may remember, recall back um, during the pandemic. This was an ED doc in New York. Uh, she contracted COVID, uh, recovered from COVID, came back, um, and it was just too much to bear. And you know she didn't seek help, uh, and then she committed suicide. So it was. It was one of those things that, so this Provider Protection Act is kind of looking at protecting providers and, and healthcare workers to come forward and share and be vulnerable and not worry about repercussions from health, uh, from others like being employers, et cetera. So, but when he addressed our group at Day Off the Hill, I mean, he, he wasn't like giving lip service. This guy truly, truly feels the, the weight that healthcare providers uh, feel right now. And he is, you know, he's 100%. It was very, very emotional. And anybody can weigh in that happened to be there. You can, uh, you know, go back and, uh, you know, and help me out here. But he was incredible. And to the point, and I always have this phrase that, you know, when people ask me why I join ENA, and I'm like, you know, the only people that get emergency department nurses are other emergency department nurses. And I told Senator Kane at the, after he hit after his presentation, I'm like, I think you get us. I really felt that he actually got us. So it was, it was really, really, really important. And it was, it was good to see, so. So Ron, some of the comments uh, that have come in, we've been talking about the long-term look, um, you know, some of the comments and feel free to respond, you know, or offer some thoughts. Um, it brought up that, remember, it's not only the individual, but the healthcare system, as well as the employer and the overall communities that are also going to be coping with the long-term effect, uh, long effect of COVID uh, on well-being. Um, you know, uh, Yope brought up that uh, there was a lot of focus that was uh, given to nurses and their expertise and their role in the pandemic. And, uh, you know, maintaining that focus on, on that is something that would be important, you know, moving forward. So people are continuing to, to pay attention uh, to nurses and their role, but also the wear and tear, as, as you alluded to earlier, um, was brought up the idea to start con the concept of self-care and wellness in nursing school uh, to bring it up at an earlier stage. Um, you know, Patty mentions, you know, being present, and, and I think you were talking about this, uh, acknowledging, you know, that not everybody has the same level of resilience and uh, may, you know, deal with these challenges a little bit differently from one another. Uh, another comment is, you know, talking about crisis preparation, and actually there's a couple that talk about preparedness uh, from the, the clinical crisis side of things, but also looking at the, you know, the wear and tear, you know, how do you respond, how do you debrief on these things and not just kind of move forward too quickly. I think is some of what was being referred to there. Um, you know, uh, Carla brings up, you know, the, it's important to focus on the strengths and successes that we've had over the year while acknowledging, you know, the need to, you know, to identify the gaps and the problems. Um, but, you know, when, you know, but if I find if I move on to what it was good or done well, it gives her a hope uh, to make a difference moving forward rather than just focusing on the negative events that haven't, you know, nobody can change. Um, a couple more here. Um, and, and you know we've we've paid some attention, uh, shared some of this on social media recently. The Northwell Healthcare Nurse Choir, which was on America's Got Talent, 
um, obviously that's where their biggest spotlight has been on national TV. But if you uh, do a little look, they've been, they came together at the beginning of the pandemic and they've been doing a lot around, um, you know, locally to show what nurses are about, but also gave them an outlet to do some other things, um, you know, beyond just going to work and, and facing, you know, the struggles, especially in, in New York where things happened. Um, and so those are really, you know, um, and, and uh, you know, Richard Moreau from our government relations, you know, reiterating what you talked about with Senator Tim Kaine, showing his his heartfelt concern for emergency nurses and other healthcare workers. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good thoughts about what's happened and how to move forward, Ron. Any anything that you take away from those comments? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, thanks, Dan, for kind of recapping some of those. I'm trying to scroll through and catching some of them as well. But you know, like to to Carla's point, right? You know. And I think that's one of the things that we do as a profession and then especially ED nurses is we, you know, we tend to focus on not necessarily what we call a negative, but we, at the end of the shift, we forget that, you know, we, we focus on, oh, I didn't get that EKG in time or man, that person was mad at me because I didn't do this or that, but we, we don't stop and kind of refocus uh, and we refocus to the point of, and I, I try to tell our staff here is like, don't don't focus on the the one that one thing that you know that missed IV or whatever it might have been, but focus on in your 12 hours or eight hours or whatever you worked, how many people you touched in a most vulnerable time of their life. So you know that may be that person's only visit to an emergency department ever in their entire life, and you had an impact on them. So don't focus on the stuff you didn't do, uh, but focus on rather the stuff that you got to do. And, and, and being able to help out in, the, in those times as well. So, yeah, and if you guys haven't seen the Americans Got Talent, uh, the 18 nurses from uh, Northwell, it's going, it's buzzing through the, the chat. Now don't Google it right now. You got to finish it up this. We've got a couple more slides, but afterwards, go ahead and Google them. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, uh, get, get a couple tissues ready. Um, so how, how can we support you? Um, and how do you want others to know you're, you're supporting them? So do we have any ideas of any, any, anything that you've seen or you've heard, or maybe your, your system is doing, um, to help this? I know we talked about, I heard a comment the other day about, you know, teaching individuals to be resilient. Um, but 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 bigger than that, um, not teaching necessarily individuals to be resilient, but how systems can help protect um, the individual staff and stuff. We talked about that. So what what can be put in place in a system wide, uh, bigger global message than just trying to teach the individual to be resilient? But how do we how do we put systems and progress and programs in place to help help that out? So. I don't know if anybody's got anything going. Yope, you said keep the conversation circles going. I love it. And Ron, we can open up other questions if anybody else has uh, things that go, you know, uh, questions in general uh, on ENA. I know we've got a couple of letters I'll share with you. I do see, uh, you know, internet, you know, shared some uh, some thoughts about uh, a rescue cart, you know, to, mm. to use. Um, she describes it similar to the concept of the crash cart, uh, you know, which everybody obviously knows what that's for. But the rescue cart is, uh, you, you know, stocked with snacks, bottled water, books, magazines, personal care items, and other supplies to quote unquote revive staff after stressful events, uh, and also including stationery, uh, so people can write notes of gratitude to their team team members. Um, certainly, you know, that's that's an interesting um, you know concept to kind of put it all together and, and have it ready and available whenever those mm -hmm. moments come up. Yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, Terry Deloy mentions uh, code lavenders for staff, you know, things like serenity rooms. Ron, what, what do you guys have uh, where you're at? You know, whether it's just everyday, the everyday things that you experience and needing to get away and, and kind of reset for a moment. Uh, is there a moment of pause? Is there something like a car, you know, the rescue cart or some other things that people have a chance to step away, you know, briefly or to kind of gather themselves or, you know, what, what do you see? Yeah, we, we highly encourage our staff to get away, you know, even we, we, we need to step away, even if it's uh, for a little bit, a little bit, and we got a, you know, a separate break room that's separated from the emergency department, so you can kind of get away and get in there and kind of, kind of relax a little bit. One of the, one of the great things that we do each, each shift, we have a, a shift report from our charge nurse, but, 
at the bottom is an opportunity for kudos and recognition. And, it, you know, it, it's awesome to see the majority of the time that aspect of the report is bigger than the rest of the, the narrative of stuff. You know, you know, you got throughput issues, you got a violent patient issue or something along those lines, or we had a fall or whatever. But at the bottom, it's it's like, you know, I, you know, Jamie was amazing. She helped out here. Uh, Doug was awesome. You know, thanks to, you know, the secretary for staying over. You know, we have uh, we have a guy on nights that for our EVS systems. Um, and he, he's kind of assigned to our department to help out and do some things. But he'll go up and he, he'll go out of our department to go upstairs to clean beds that he knows that are marked as ready, but or, or marked as, uh, you know, assigned, but they're dirty. So in order for him to go, you know, move some stuff through, he'll go upstairs on his own and clean the bed and then mark it as clean so we can move the patients out. So just the recognition and then a weekly email goes out to everybody, you know, you can drop a card in a box in the department and let people know that, you know, they're doing good things and stuff. So I think it's, I think it's always just trying to give those kudos on your back because we got to have each other's back. Another thought brought up, you know, Teresa Coyne, you know, making sure to, that, you know, people do take their lunch breaks, they get their, their bio breaks, they're, you know, getting a chance to, to get away. And as you mentioned earlier, ED nurses are, are you know, head down, get through it all type, you know, type people. Um, but even those little things make a difference to, you know, get that, that break in the flow from time to time. Yeah. And I know for, for our department, it's been that culture forever. And I don't know, it may be, may be the same in everybody else's or some of your guys' departments, but it tends to be worse on night shift. Um, there's some kind of culture or mantra that it's a shield of honor if I can go 12 and a half hours without peeing or eating. Um, that's not really, that's not good. I mean, that you can't sustain that. So, you know, it, and like you said, Teresa, it should be, it should be the, you know, a rare exception that you never take a break. You, you have to, um, you know, and I know that people don't want to leave your colleagues and, you know, you're getting, you know, you're getting killed right now and you're getting crushed, but you have to get away. Um, so if not it, in the long run, it's not good. So. So Ron, we do have a couple other um, quick notes to make. You know, questions if you're you're ready for uh, a couple of other things here. Sure. Um, we did one more comment here from Antoinette on on our main topic for the day. So I'll, I'll offer this up to you for a comment before we move over. Um, you know, uh, Antoinette's comment was, you know, do not rely solely on coworkers and direct reports for all your social needs. You know, good relationships and family and friends that are, you know, are also essential. And um, you know, looking at who's around you and uh, associate yourself with people, you know, in, in different circumstances, friendships, faith-based organizations, professional groups, book clubs, volunteer agencies. It, it sounds like she's, you know, that, that holistic look at who you are beyond an emergency nurse is uh, just as important as anything that's happening within your facility or within your sphere, your professional sphere. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, well said, um, you know, we have to broaden our net, right? I mean, it's good to, uh, you know, talk with my buddies who are not in healthcare or my neighbor who has nothing to do, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's good to have a variety of people to talk to. Uh, Cause then we can talk about something different besides, you know, lab and other specimens hemolyzed or whatever it might be. But um, yeah, it's, it's good because it kind of, kind of gives you a little respite and a breather from your every, everyday work. So so run uh, just a couple of other quick notes, you know, and obviously people can continue to put things in the in the chat or in the Q and A here with a little bit of time that we have, and uh, we do have some questions that we'll have direct outreach to um, some specific things that people had asked about. So we'll make sure there's some direct follow up with okay. uh, with those folks. But um, a topic that you you touched on very briefly earlier, which has not gone away due to the pandemic, is obviously workplace violence. Um, you know, we've got uh, you know, uh, Wendy who submitted a, you know, her thoughts beforehand, but just talking about uh, continuing to look at the ways that um, our members and all ED nurses and ENA uh, can continue to be vocal about, uh, you know, things that are going on relating to workplace violence and how to prevent that. Um, obviously, we continue to, you know, to, to do things that run, you know, just touch on a little bit of, of where things are at uh, when it comes to workplace violence, knowing that it didn't really go away at all during the pandemic. Yeah, you know, we, we all realized it didn't go away, we just probably got a little pause to push to the side. And um, and so to let you know, ENAs didn't let it go away either. So, you know, 
reconvening, partnering up and, and kind of uh, stoking that fire again with our, our some of our partners out there like ASAP to try to, you know, push on that no silence on ED violence again and just kind of get that to the fore, forethought of everybody's mind. I mean, you know, as we all know that, you know, the world stopped and everything was COVID, COVID, COVID. And now uh, we got everything else coming back, right, as COVID kind of dies down a little bit. Um, we got all the other stuff that we've dealt with before, you know, throughput issues, camping, um, all the other, all the other quality indicators that uh, we, we, we deal with all the time in the emergency department, you know. So uh, it, we are pushing on that and pushing for the advocacy. I know Richard and Rob are keeping an eye on anything in, in DC that would push towards that as well. So really, really on the forefront and need everybody's uh, uh, help and appreciate anything you can do to at your local level as well, whether that's being successful in your own institution or with your local congressman. So, uh, so Ryan, there's been a number of questions relating to to GA, and uh, we won't be able to get to all of them. And there will be some. We'll be able to um, to offer some follow up, and certainly encourage um, anybody with questions about GA to uh, to email governance at ena.org. Uh, you know, if they've got additional questions. But one thing we wanted to clarify. For international delegates who are prohibited from travel uh, traveling to Orlando, there will be some accommodations for their uh, for virtual participation there. I know some other questions about domestic, um, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll reach out to some folks and make sure that you know we get some clarifications on on how that's you know our suggestions from that side of things. But yeah, just want to make that's sure. That's great. Yeah, no, yeah. Way. Thanks for that, Dan. I mean, so yeah, we'll thanks for bringing those questions up. You know, because if you have the question, somebody else might have the same question. So we'll we'll get that all all out, sent out everybody so you have a, a good understanding and everything so thank you for asking that so that's it for questions and comments at this point ron i'll keep an eye out for anything more uh, as we wind down all righty so it uh, looks like the time yeah look at the time it's already uh, 10 till the top of the hour so it's flown by again uh, let me say once again thank you to everyone for taking some time out of your busy schedule uh, to be part of the latest ena uh, ena together town hall our next town hall will be September and we'll be live in Orlando. So that'll be your opportunities to throw the water balloons and rotten tomatoes at me because I will actually be in person. Uh, so I hope you can stop by and see it uh, with us in person. Otherwise, please join us in virtually from wherever you are during EN21. Um, near or far, ENA members embody the spirit of ENA together, speaking for the board and, my, and the staff. There aren't enough words to express our appreciation for each of you for what you do every day in your emergency department and what you do for the community and the care you provide to your patients. Uh, yeah, it just, you guys are stellar. Uh, so please take care of yourself and those around you. And I hope to see all of you smiling faces in Orlando in a few short months. So remember, stay positive, stay focused and be the good. Have a great day. Take care.